in our schools what teachers are doing to address multiculturalism is they're basically, most schools are setting up days uh, where a group of students might research a particular culture and then present on it, or bring in food from a particular country, or you know a video of a certain dance style from a certain country. And while all of those things are great, I don't think that students are really getting the value of other cultures um, from eating different foods or just seeing videos. Um, I remember when I was in elementary school, we had like two or three days out of the year where we would talk about different cultures. Um, I even had a Muslim student in my class with me that I didn't even realize he was Muslim until years later. Um, I just knew that he fasted at certain points during the year and he didn't eat lunch with us or he was gone for a month because he went to Mecca and I thought it was like a vacation. I didn't realize that there was a religious reason behind it. So part of the problem with what teachers are doing in schools right now is that they're teaching about cultures but they're not allowing students to have authentic experiences with those cultures. And besides just um, different countries, different races or religions or backgrounds, um, diversity in the classroom goes beyond how students look. It comes into how they learn, what their home life is like, what kind of socioeconomic status do they have. And by refusing to address all of these differences in our students, we're expecting all of our students to learn exactly the same way and to behave exactly the same way. When in reality, you have 30 different individuals that you're trying to address all of those needs. So no one particular style of teaching, no one particular style of um, classroom management is gonna work for all 30 of those students. Another thing too is with the multicultural days, you're saying this is how all people from this country look or talk or act or dance or eat. Um, even if that's not the intended message, that's the message that kids are getting, when in reality we need to look at every single person as an individual, whether they're a part of a certain cultural group or not, there are going to be differences to those norms, to those stereotypes. And our students need to be aware of that so that they can think before they make you know, judgments like they've been conditioned to do at home, perhaps. Um, so that's one reason why we need more multicultural experiences in our schools. So it's important to teach our students and our families that are involved in schools about multiculturalism because the reality is that we don't have 25 to 30 students that look the same, speak the same language, eat the same food, and even come from the same home lives. So for them to acknowledge that they are different is a step in the right direction when you're talking about what we're doing now and just getting them to the point where they can accept that they're different and that differences are okay. Um, when you talk about students being multicultural, it gives them validity in their self-esteem and in their learning to just accept that they're different. And when you are comfortable with yourself is when you can really start to open up and explore new topics and different things and even see the world differently. If you think about how we as Americans have almost Americanized different cultures. Um, you can kind of see where students are coming from when they're saying, you're different, you're wrong. And we want to get to the point where we say, you're different, that's awesome. So that they can bring their cultural differences and their experiences to life in the classroom and it be a safe place to talk about those things. Because even though multicultural experiences can be uncomfortable when you're first starting out, it also adds a whole other dynamic to students' learning and how they understand history and facts about our world and how things work. And even just realizing that cultures are different, but it's okay. Um, a lot of times we see our parents and our grandparents had prejudices just because that's how they grew up. That's how their parents were. But in our generation of students and educators, we're trying to teach students to think for themselves 
but also be morally responsible when they're making decisions, when they're um, planning out career paths for themselves and everything. You want to send a message that no matter what you look like, where you came from, what you eat, you can be whatever you want to be. And for that to happen, not only do students have to believe that, but we also have to cultivate a culture that says, you're different from me and that's okay. Um, as a teacher, I think that first you need to um, kind of evaluate your class and understand that even if it seems through the eye that your class does not have um, any difference in um, the culture, that all those kids most likely are coming from a different home life. And so just by um, being um, aware of that. so. Um, being purposeful and seeking out children's different cultures and celebrating them. Um, not just saying, I'm aware that um, my class may have different cultures in it, but purposely highlighting it and celebrating it, um, making sure that your classroom culture um, will cultivate um, and, you know, acceptance and curiosity and that those kids will have the um, opportunity to say, hey, this is how I'm different, and then you modeling, how neat is that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and everybody bringing um, their different family units, life, um, culture into the classroom. Even if all your kids look exactly the same, most likely they come from different cultures. What we can do better is honestly just be more open about different cultures in there. I know a lot of schools have like a cultural assembly and it's one day for one hour. We need to have more of those. You need to be open about your cultures that you have in your classroom and the cultures around Another you. thing that we need to focus on is not being colorblind to students. We need to focus on their ethnicities, their cultures, because that is just the importance, you know? Um, just saying that, oh, I don't see black or white, that's demeaning them. Their culture is important. Their ethnicity is important to them. By saying, I don't see colors, you're saying that I think we're all the same. I think that I'm the same as you and we do the same thing. So what can teachers do to kind of help bridge the multiculturalism gap between what they see at home and what you're trying to teach them in the classroom? I think it's, um, important to never be disrespectful of families um, even if what you are seeing at home is um, maybe even some racism or um, families not being accepting of, of other people that are, are not just like them um, but if you think about how much time you spend um, with a child um, we can teach them how to read, we can teach them how to do math and science and, and think in social studies and history. You can also teach them how to um, think towards other people um, and maybe start thinking on their own a little bit um, just by how you model what you're thinking. And just like anything else, when I'm frustrated, I am going to tell my class, I'm frustrated right now and this is what I'm going to do in response to that. Same thing by you modeling how you're thinking out loud. This student is different. You're right, that student is different. Let's look at this a little bit closer. And by just talking your way on how you think it seems natural, on how mm -hmm. you think and how you um, respect different cultures. As schools, you need to have programs set in your school for bullying, any type of bullying, especially with ethnicities. This is a hot topic right now to the point where so many people are being bullied because of their cultures or their ethnicities to the point where they don't feel comfortable coming into school. Um, so you need to have codes and regulations that the child knows, that the parents knows, that the community knows, that what you are going to implement is going to be something important. The last step is implementing the community. You as the teacher need to know, let the students know that it is important in your classroom that you create a cultural, um, that you think, that you, 
that they know that it's okay to bring in their culture, their ethnicity, that it, that you want them to share about their any of their aspects of their lives. You, if they go on a uh, vacation to another country that you want them to bring home something and bring it to school and show everybody about something about their culture, something about their ethnicity. And if their parents or somebody goes away, that maybe they'll come in and talk to the class about it. This is something that you do not want to hide. Um, it's so important that we add this into our classroom because so many people just throw it under the rug. What? could you say that would help uh, maybe like first or second year teachers um, just to help them embrace the cultural diversity mm -hmm. and like how they can teach their students I think um, the first step is admitting that you don't know everything um, so I know that one mm -hmm. year um, I had a family and I knew that they were um, a completely different religion from a different culture and I didn't know anything about that and so instead of um, me putting on some type of airs acting like oh I know about this I went up to the mom on open house night and said I know that your son and your family um, are this religion this culture whatever because sometimes they do mix um, mm -hmm. can you tell me more about that I want to make sure that this whole year that I'm respectful of your family and your son because that's my job can you educate me on this a little bit Mm -hmm. And she was thrilled. She sent home, or she sent to me, I guess, to school, tons of literature about what they believe in and why, and the foods that he could eat, and why he didn't mm -hmm. stand for the pledge. And I learned so much. And I put them in a file, and I read it all. And me and that family had such a great relationship. So on the mm -hmm. first or second day of school, this child wasn't standing for the pledge, and the kids were, well, why? You know, and because it was... He was technically breaking a class rule because the rule was, we do the pledge, you stand up. I mm -hmm. could say, well, this is how his family's different. Isn't that interesting?